Hey all this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach and today we're going to be doing some AP Physics 1. We are going to be looking at some torque uh, rotation problems. Um, the first few free response questions I'm going to work on are statics. So this is where uh, nothing is actually rotating, everything is typically balanced, but we'll take a look at the problem and see kind of how to go from there. Um, in general on the AP exam you don't know exactly what uh, you're going to get so you kind of have to just go with it. Um, as usual, I encourage you to pause the video, uh, try to do the problem. Uh, I have the, 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 the problem right here. Try to do the pro attempt the problem on your own, and then come back to watch the video after you've attempted the problem. So a solid disk of unknown mass and known radius is used as a pulley in a lab experiment as shown above. A small block of mass M is attached to a string, the other end of which is attached to the pulley and wrapped around it several times. The block of mass M is released from rest and it takes time T to fall the distance D to the floor. Calculate the linear acceleration A of the falling block in terms of the given quantities. Okay, so um, what are the given quantities? What they're giving me is this block mass M. They're giving me the time it takes to fall, and they're giving me a D distance. So, um, and I want to find the acceleration. Um, Well, I know that um, the, the first part of here is just a kinematic, kinematic relationship. I know this equation, delta x equals 1, uh, I'm sorry, v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. So what is delta x in this case? It's this distance that I travel. That's the displacement. Its initial velocity is zero, it's released from rest. So its initial velocity is zero in the vertical direction. One half a t squared. Um, and I want to solve for a. So I have 2d divided by t squared would be equal to a. And that would be that. So that's the acceleration of this thing. The time t is measured for various heights d, and the data are recorded in the following table. Okay. What quantity should be graphed in order to best determine the acceleration of the block? Explain your reasoning. Well, um, what I want to plot is I want the slope to be a. So I would plot the quantity two. If I rearrange the equation, a t squared. If I plot this as my y quantity and this as my x quantity, so I'm going to plot two d versus t squared. This is what I want to plot, and the slope of this then would be a. Okay, so y equals mx. That's kind of what I'm trying to do. So td versus t squared. So um, so 2d. Uh, let's let's do let's so let's fill out our table square. Usually they give you empty entries, but I guess back then they didn't necessarily um, give you empty table entries to fill this in. Let's do 2d over here. This is one, two, three, four. And t squared, I wouldn't need to use my calculator. So 0.68 squared. So far, it's no rotation. So this is 0 0.4624. 0 .4, I'm just going to do two decimal places. 1.02 squared is 1.04. Then 1.19 squared is 1.42. And then 1.38 squared is 1.90. So on the x-axis, I want t squared. So I want t squared down here, and I want 2d at the top here. So t squared is going to go from about 0.46 to about, let's say, 2. So I made this is 2, then this would be 1, and this would be 0.5 and 0.6. And then vertically, I want to just go uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so 0.46, this is 0.5, this is 0.4, so this is about 0.46, about halfway between the two. I'm at 1, so about there. Um, at 1.04, 1, this is 1, this is 1.1, 1 1.04 1 would be about there. I'm at 2, mark it about there. And then 1.42, this is 1.5, 1 1.4, 1 1.42 is about here, I'm about 3. And then 1.9, which is right on this dot here, 
uh, I would be at four. Okay. Now I would attempt to draw a line that best goes through all of those points. Okay. And then I want to now um, find the slope of this line approximately. So what's a good, um, usually the further part of points there are, the, uh, the more accurate. Um, so we would say, what's a good intersection point? I'm trying to find a good intersection point. Maybe about there. We'll say about there. And about... I don't know, we use this point here. Okay, so this point over here is 1.9, and the y value is about 3. Point... Each of these is 0. 0.2, so we'll call it about 3.9. And this point down here is the point um, 0. 0.1, and the y value is about 0. 0.2. So we're going to do 3.9 minus 0.2 over 1.9 minus 0.1. Let's see what we get. Four point one one meters per second squared. Okay, cool. Um, do, 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 calculate the rotational inertia of the pulley in terms of mRNA and fundamental constants. Okay, so now we're now what we're doing is we're we need to look at uh, this problem here, this this thing, um, because we want to we want to find the rotational inertia. It means I. In general, we want to use this equation that um, the net torque is equal to I times alpha. Okay. So we need to do a free body diagram on this guy, sorry about that, and calculate the net torque. So let's see, what are all the forces acting on this? Well, he's got, when you do a free body diagram now, when you're doing rotation, it's really important where the force is applied to calculate the torque. So I have a force there, I have gravity. So this is gravity, this is tension from a string, and then I have another string here, um, call it T2, call this T1, and those are all the forces acting on it, okay? Now, this thing has no linear acceleration, so the sum of all of these forces have to be equal. So T1 plus T2 plus Fg all have to equal zero. Well, actually, sorry, um, T1 plus Fg, well, let's, which way we wanna do? Well, let's do down is positive and up is negative, it doesn't really matter. It's really the down forces are going to equal the upward forces, right? Because while it's rotating, it doesn't have any net like acceleration, no linear acceleration. So that means uh, T1 plus Fg is equal to T2. Now, this is not particularly helpful because I don't know the mass of this, and I don't know what this is, okay? So this is not a very helpful equation. This is the net force equation, right? This is F net equals MA. So this is, this is in general not a helpful equation because I don't know what all of these are. Now let's calculate the net torque on the system though. Each of these forces has to apply a, a, a torque. And let's do T1 for example. T1 is applying um, a force down in this direction. The point of rotation is the center of the circle. And as you remember what we talked about, or um, in my primer video for this, is to calculate the torque, I draw a vector from the point of rotation to where the force is being applied, okay? Now these things are already perpendicular to each other. So to calculate the torque from T1, I would say it's equal to T1 times R, okay? So that's the torque due to this force, because these are already perpendicular to each other because of where the force is being applied. Okay, now Fg is applying a torque, but it's distant, like gravity is always applied at the center of mass of the object. And you see the distance from the point of rotation is zero. So this is time zero, because remember torque is um, uh, the distance, this R 
times um, the force here. And the same with the T2, it's times zero also, because while there is a, it should make sense, these two forces are not causing any rotation of this disk, okay? Which is why I don't include them as part of the torque, because they're not actually causing it to rotate. They would cause it to slide and move, but um, they're not. So this, the, my net torque is just T1 times R, and that equals I times alpha. Now T1, I don't know what T1 is, but um, I need to use um, this free body diagram on M to calculate what T1 is. M1 has the force of gravity going down, Mg, and it has T1 going up. Now Mg, the net force, see these aren't equal to each other. You might think, aren't these equal to each other? Only if this thing was sitting still, but this is accelerating downward, right? It has an acceleration. It's falling. So that means that these are, so my net force, mg minus t1, the net force downward, is equal to ma. So t1 is equal to mg plus ma. Okay. Now a, we, um, we found to be 2d over t squared. So I can factor out an m, and I make this g plus a, which was 2d over t squared. Okay. And now I can plug this into here. Because my um, I is equal to um, T1R over alpha. And that's equal to M times G plus 2D over T squared R over alpha. Now, I wasn't given alpha, right? These are all constants that I know. I know the radius of this disk. I know the distance and the time it fell. I know what g is. I know the mass of this thing. But I don't know alpha. Okay? So I have to... But, but think about... Look at these. These things are moving together. Alpha has to be related to this... The, the, like, if this is accelerating at A, then my tangential acceleration here also has to be A. Because it's the rope is unwinding at the same rate that this thing is falling, right? So... Um, the equation that relates alpha to its uh, tangential acceleration is given by this, uh, is equal to alpha times r. This is an important equation. Okay, a, again, is equal to 2d over t squared, right? Because the acceleration on this thing, this tangential acceleration, um, is the same as this acceleration. That's uh, for, of the block falling. So that's equal to alpha times r, so that implies alpha is equal to um, uh, 2d over rt squared. And I can plug that into here. So I get this is equal to mg plus 2d over t squared times r divided by 2d over rt squared. Okay. And if I kind of flip everything to the top this is m g plus 2d over t squared bring it to the numerator i just you know flip this multiply by the reciprocal r times so that'd be r squared t squared divided by 2d and is that going to simplify it all um it could simplify a little bit if i expand it but i'm just going to leave it like that So that is that one. The value of acceleration found in part B, along with numerical values for the given quantities in your answer to C, can be used to determine the rotational inertia of the pulley. The pulley, oh, actually, they wanted this in terms of A. Sorry. So I didn't actually need to. Uh, I, I should have done it in terms of A. So instead of this, sorry, I didn't read that I could do it in terms of A. Um, so I don't need to do this uh, a substitution a is alpha r so I get i is equal to m g plus a r squared no wait no r times this is actually this becomes uh, yeah r squared over a if you kind of just don't do this substitution. Just do it like that. Kind of weird. I, you know, th why did they give this to you if um, they wouldn't you? But whatever, whatever, it's fine. Okay. 
The pulley is so um, the value of acceleration found in part V with along with numerical values for the given quantities in your answer C can be used to determine the rotational inertia of the pulley. Yep, so I can solve for the rotational inertia of the pulley. The pulley is removed from its support and its rotational inertia to be found greater than this value. Give one explanation for this discrepancy. So why would I be bigger than um, what we suspected? Well, one of the things that we assumed here is that tension the only thing causing this thing affecting the rotation of this thing is that uh, this tension would be pulling on it and causing it to rotate but really around here this is not of uniform thick this there might be some friction here on the rotation that might be slowing down the rotation right like it's not perfectly frictionless so the friction might actually cause this thing to rotate a little bit slower from this and that's why you're but we, we didn't account for that so we kind of assumed all this tension would cause this rotation but really it would have rotated faster if there weren't any friction right and so that comes out as us thinking it's harder to rotate than it really is it's actually easier to rotate um um that would be a discrepancy let's see what else could be a discrepancy i don't know that's the only thing i could think of is some friction um, other than just measurement error for the other quantities. Yeah. Okay. So hope you guys found that helpful. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.